Good evening. Welcome to this special service on Sunday evening, the 15th of November 2020. This is our service of remembrance and of thanksgiving for those whom we love but who are no longer here with us. And this is an annual event. Generally speaking, we've held once a year this kind of memorial service at around this time of year. And we've taken the opportunity to remember and to give thanks for those who have passed away and who we still love very much. Normally, we'd be able to gather in church, uh, maybe in Donegal Town, Lahey, Kelimard, Lahesk, one of the four, and we'd be able to be together and to have that added benefit of seeing each other's faces and then perhaps having a cup of tea at the end of the service. And I'm very sorry that that aspect of it is not here tonight. But I hope that if you will feel free to put in a comment if you're watching live on Facebook or even if you're watching later on on Facebook or on YouTube, um, then it'll be a small way that you can interact with one another and have that sense of fellowship together. I often say at the beginning of this service um, that we're very much doing this um, according to our Christian and um, Church of Ireland understanding of death and of remembrance and of the hope that we have. We're not praying for the dead. We're praying for the living and we're remembering the dead. We're remembering that great fact that we believe in the communion of saints. That is, we believe that those who have gone before us to heaven are united with those of us who are still here on earth. And we also believe in the resurrection of the body. We have a hope as Christians that one day we are going to enjoy life as God fully intended it to be. We're going to enjoy life in the new heavens and new earth, the new creation. And it's going to be wonderful and that's open and available to all who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So the way this service will proceed tonight uh, is that, that we will um, have, we've got a couple of hymns, Zara and Naomi, that have recorded for us. And we're going to listen to those and I'll put the words into the comments and you can join in at home if you like by singing or simply by listening. We'll have a couple of readings from the Bible and I'll say a few words about those. Then we'll have a time of prayer and remembrance. And I will uh, read out the names of those people whose names have been put into me in advance of this evening. And uh, so that's the, the plan. So I'm not going to go through and name everybody who's here watching, but I see your names. I see the comments and that's lovely to know that so many people are tuned in on this Sunday night. The curtains are drawn. Maybe the fire is on in front of you and we're going to sit down and we're going to have a time of remembrance. And I hope it's an encouraging time for you now. We're going to begin with the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And if you let me just put the words of that hymn into the comments section uh, of your screen, um, you may be able to see that. And this is going to be sung for us by Zara Montgomery. Great is Thy Faithfulness. Cheers. 
Thanks, Sarah, so much. Later in our Bible readings, we're going to hear the part of Scripture that those wonderful words are based on. Well, let's get going with our time of prayer. The Lord be with you. We meet together today to remember before God those we have known and loved, to renew our trust and confidence in Christ, and to pray that by his Spirit he would support and guide us in the future. The prayer on the screen is one we can use together. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in faith and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys which you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from Psalm 121 in the traditional form. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh even from the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved, and he that keepeth thee will not sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself is thy keeper. The Lord is thy defence upon thy right hand, so that the sun shall not burn thee by day, neither the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Yea, it is even he that shall keep thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth for evermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the main Bible reading I want to read to you this evening is from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. And this is where you'll hear the words echoed in that hymn. Lamentations, chapter 3, beginning at verse 19. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, The Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as I said already, we've come here tonight to remember uh, loved ones who are no longer with us and who have passed away. And remembering is a kind of a a double-edged thing. Remembering can bring comfort and it can bring pain. Remembering can bring a lot of pleasure and it can bring a lot of sorrow. It's... uh, A smile comes to our lips as we remember a loved one and as we think of the qualities that they had which made them love us so much and respect them. As we think of the funny things that they did, then we laugh and we smile about it. But also, as well as that smile to our lips, it brings a tear to our eyes because we're so aware of the painful reality that person is no longer with us and how we miss them so much. So remembering is a two-edged thing. And the Bible writers understood this. Uh, The book of Lamentations, that reading that we had, is all about remembering. 
and it might not be a very familiar part of the Old Testament. Um, so I'll give you a quick little bit of background. The Book of Lamentations, we think, was written by Jeremiah, who also wrote the much longer book of prophecy that bears his name. And uh, Lamentations was written around about 587 BC. Now, that doesn't mean very much to us, but um, that year, or the equivalent in the dating system that they would have used, would have been highly significant to the Jews. Um, it would have meant as much to them as perhaps uh, September the 11th, 2001, means to us the day the Twin Towers fell. Or perhaps uh, the 1st of July, 1916, when the Battle of the Somme began and, and so many were killed. Because 587 was the year that Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, was destroyed by the Babylonian army. And they came and they laid siege to the city, which had long been considered to be impenetrable uh, because of its walls and because of the sense that God was blessing that place. But the city fell. Many, many people were killed. Many, many others were carried away as exiles far hundreds of miles away into Babylon and they never saw their native land again. And in the aftermath of those events, Jeremiah wrote five poems which make up the five chapters of this book of Lamentations. And they're full of sorrow and tears and disappointment at what has happened, as you would expect. And there's a lot of darkness in them and there's a few shafts of light. And the brightest of them is the passage that I just read. So first of all, think about the dark background. Jeremiah says, I remember uh, my affliction. I remember my wanderings. My soul is downcast when I think about these things. So he feels that, that kind of heaviness. He thinks of what has been lost and he's bitter and he's miserable about it. And if you sometimes feel that way, if you sometimes feel very downcast, if you sometimes feel a sense of, of anger and hurt over the loss of someone, then you're not alone in that. And indeed, the writers of the books of the Bible were well aware of that feeling and they expressed it in their writings. You might forget that. We might sometimes think that the Bible is very stained glass, very perfect. Everybody's on their best behavior. But no, when we actually read many parts of the scriptures, we find people expressing their hurt and their frustration and even their anger to the Lord and their disappointment. And so when we pray, we can express all our feelings. We can be like Jeremiah and express the disappointment and the raw emotions that we have. And it's important to know that God has broad shoulders and he's able to hear that from us and he's able to bear that from us. Better to let those feelings out than to bottle them up inside. So that's the dark background. But then Jeremiah also has that second type of remembering where he it brings him peace and hope. Because he says this, he says, I call this to mind and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So Jeremiah decides to remember the Lord. He turns from remembering those things that he has lost to remembering the things that he cannot lose. He remembers the Lord. He says, because of his great love, we're not consumed. We talked, don't we, about being, someone being consumed by grief, eaten up by it. Uh, but because of God's love, we're not totally consumed. His compassions never fail. Remember that even the best friend who walks with us through loss and suffering can't fully understand what we're going through. If, uh, if somebody says, oh, yes, I understand what you're feeling. And maybe inside we think, but you don't understand. You're not in my shoes, but the Lord fully understands what we're going through. And then he says that your compassions are new every morning. Sometimes the morning is a time of hope and getting up and getting on. And sometimes the morning is a difficult time. Sometimes sleep and dreams can take us to a happier place. And then we wake up and realize reality hits 
And so it's so important that we remember that God's mercies are new every morning, morning by morning, new mercies I see. God's uh, mercies. And so a very practical thing that we can do as we go to bed at night and then in the morning as our feet touch the floor, as we swing them over the side of the bed and as we begin a new day, to say, the Lord is good. His compassions never fail. Remember him at the beginning of every new day. Remember the Lord. That's really the simple message this evening. Remember the Lord. We remember those we've loved. We remember them with great fondness and affection. And we remember the Lord, which gives us hope as we face the future. That mercy and love shown most of all in his giving his own son, Jesus, to live and die for us. So we're going to turn from thinking about remembrance to doing our remembering. And we're going to have uh, that time together of remembrance. I'm going to put up um, these words, which are just a simple uh, little response. So when I say the words, we thank you, Lord, you can reply in your own heart or out loud uh, and, and bless your holy name and bless your holy name. So we say, we thank you, Lord, and bless your holy name. Let's remember. For all your blessings in creation. For the beauty of the earth and sky and sea. For all your works. For the wisdom with which you have ordered them. We thank you, Lord, and bless your holy name. For the happiness of our earthly life, for all our powers of mind and body, for faithful friends and the joy of loving and being loved, we thank you, Lord, and bless your holy name. For all your servants departed this life in your faith and fear, for the example they have left us, and for the blessed hope of reunion with them hereafter. We thank you, Lord, and bless your holy name. For the great salvation given to us in Jesus Christ, for his suffering and death, for his rising again and his ascending into heaven. We thank you, Lord, and bless your holy name. For the hope of a new heaven and a new earth, for the place that Christ has gone to prepare for us and for the promised vision of your glory. We thank you, Lord, and bless your holy name. And now I'll read the names of those that we are remembering. And please feel free in the silence to bring to mind any other names that you're thinking of as well. We remember James Johnston, Ailish Johnston, Mariah Johnston Eyre, John Given, Edwin Given, Naomi Lynn, Bobby Key, Roland McClay, Willie and Jean Wilson, Pat Morrow, John and Lily Love, Robbie Love, Alfie and Kathleen Sims, Raymond McGuire, Eddie and Lily Coulter, Aaron Scott, Linda Scott, Anna Cassidy, Rita Scott, 
Willie and Mary Jane Scott. Bertie and Kathleen Glenn. Alric Thompson. Billy Brown. Andrew Elliot. John and Lily Duncan. Norman Duncan. Billy Cassidy. Louis and Jimmy Henderson. Etty and Tommy Graham. Jim and Rowena Elvin. Percy Henderson. Alan and Letitia Cathcart. Audley and Kitty Brown. Finlay Anderson. Bobby Bustard. Harry Dinsmore. Maggie Dinsmore. Willie Robert Ray. And Anna Ray. Roy Irwin. Bayani Jose. Rory Dunleavy. And any and all others whose names we carry in our hearts and memories. Lord, as each and every name and life we remember, we look to you and we give you our thanks. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together as our Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our second and final hymn uh, this evening is Abide With Me. And uh, in this lovely hymn, it really is based on that fact, uh, that, that prayer that God would abide with us, which means Stay with us, remain with us. So we're praying at this evening time that we will not lack God's company, the company of the Good Shepherd. Abide with me. This is going to be sung by Naomi Montgomery. Apologies for the technical error. Here we are now. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
swift to its course, absorbed life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. Oh, that would change is not. Final prayer as we draw to a close. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may God give to you and to all those whom you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Well, that brings our service to its conclusion this evening. Uh, it's been wonderful to have you joining us, and I hope that it's been a help and a comfort to you. Can I give you a brief reminder that there are various uh, events that take place regularly, and in particular, I'll just pop this up for a moment. Uh, if you're joining us this evening and you're not regularly with us, you'd be most welcome to join us at our normal time, Sundays at 11, Wednesdays at 8 p.m., and then for a, a shorter little time of prayer on Fridays at 1 p.m. And all of those are here on Facebook Live. And do feel free to send us a little message if there's any other way that we can help you. We have lots of groups and so on meeting online. We have lots of various ways that we can uh, hopefully support and encourage one another at this a uh, fairly challenging time that we're going through just at the moment. So don't be stuck, don't be alone, get in touch please and we'll do everything we can to stay connected and to give a bit of encouragement to one another. So uh, I'm going to bid you good night and I think I'm going to leave you with the beautiful picture of Donegal Bay and perhaps um, uh, it was taken on a very sunny and lovely, bright uh, day and uh, maybe we'll hope for that when we wake up tomorrow. Perhaps this is the weather that we'll be seeing. 
Good night, God bless you, and we'll hopefully chat again soon.